How do you make sure that your groundbreaking idea isn't just another number in the world where new ideas are being made all the time? Over 3 million patent applications are filed worldwide every year, and a big chunk of them are for digital innovations. Explore Taylor's journey with Aerodigi to learn more about how patents work. And by the end, you'll know how to protect your new ideas from imitators and make yourself stand out among other inventors. Hey there innovators and founders! Did you see the last episode? Taylor and Aerodigi and I went on a journey through the world of trademarks. Don't worry if you missed it, I'll put the link in the description below. We're going to talk about another important topic today, patents. We're about to find out what Taylor did to protect Aerodigi's main technology. Okay, let's jump right in and clear up the world of patents together. As Aerodigi's prototype took shape, Taylor was amazed at how different it was. It wasn't just another air purifier. It was a big step forward into how people manage their own air quality. The small size and power of the device made it stand out. Imagine wearing a tiny air purifier around your neck for hours on end. But its size isn't the only thing that's big. Aerodigi's technology could see changes in pollution levels in real time and change how it filtered air on the spot. On top of that, Taylor added cutting-edge features, nanofiber layers that filter out tiny pollutants, AI-powered algorithms that learn from how a person breathes, and even a UVC light chamber that kills pathogens in the air are just a few examples. Now, while our previous episode focused on protecting Aerodigi's brand identity through trademarks, Taylor realized that the heart, the core technology needed is chilled. That's where patents come in. Think of trademarks as the unique labels on a bottle of fine wine, representing its brand and origin. Patents, on the other hand, protect the secret recipe inside, ensuring no one else can replicate its distinct flavor. Without a patent, Taylor's groundbreaking tech could be replicated, diluting Aerodigi's unique essence. Patents are like decorations of ownership. This is my creation, my innovation. It's not just about making sure people have legal rights. It's also about protecting great ideas. As Taylor delved deeper into the world of patents, he discovered that not all patents are created equal. Just as there are different types of books, there are different types of patents, each tailored to specific kinds of innovations. First, there's the utility patent. This is the common type, designed to protect the functional aspects of the invention. Think of it as safeguarding the how it works of a product. Then we have the design patent. While the utility patent covers the functionality, the design patent protects the unique appearance or look of the product. It's about the aesthetics, the visual appeal. And there's also the utility model, often referred to as petty patent in some countries. It's similar to the utility patent, but typically has a shorter term and less stringent patentability requirements. It's a quicker and often more affordable way to protect an invention. For Aerodigi's technology, Taylor opt for utility patent. Why? Because the essence of Aerodigi wasn't just about the sleek design, but its groundbreaking functionality, the sensors, the adjustable filtering, the smartphone connectivity, and other advanced features we discussed. Choosing the right patent type is like picking the right tool for the job. It's essential to ensure your innovation is not only protected, but also positioned to thrive in the market. For Taylor, this meant securing the very heart of Aerodigi's innovation. Before Taylor could apply for a patent, he needed to do his homework. The first step? A thorough patent search. He used the USPTO database to check if there was anything similar to Aerodigi's technology already patented. While there were many air purifiers out there, non-combined Aerodigi's features, its compact size, its ability to adapt to pollution levels, its smartphone connectivity, this gave Taylor confidence in his innovation that it was unique. Next, Taylor documented everything about Aerodigi. From the first sketches to the software details, he kept a detailed record. This wasn't just about for his reference. It was a crucial evidence of how Aerodigi was developed. Then, Taylor learned about the special feature of the US patent system, its provisional patent application. This allowed him to file a basic version of his patent, giving him a patent pending status for 12 months. This was a big advantage. It meant Taylor had a year to improve Aerodigi, get feedback, or even talk to potential investors, all while having some level of protection. By taking these steps, Taylor was setting up Aerodigi for a strong patent application, ensuring his invention was well protected. With his groundwork in place, Taylor was ready to dive into the patent application process. The first step was to prepare a comprehensive description of Aerodigi's technology. This wasn't just a casual overview. It had the detail of every aspect of the invention, from the details of how the device works to unique features and the benefits it offered. Alongside the description, Taylor had to define the claims of his patent. These claims are crucial. They define the boundaries of protection. Think of them as the fence around the property, marking where rights start and end. 
Taylor also included detailed drawings, showcasing ROTG from various angles, highlighting its unique features. These visuals, combined with the description, painted a clear picture of what ROTG was and how it was innovative. With his application ready, Taylor submitted to the USPTO, but the process was far from over. The USPTO would review his application, ensuring it met all the criteria and didn't overlap with existing patents. During this review, Taylor received office actions from the USPTO. These are essentially feedback or questions about the application. Some were straightforward, while others required Taylor to clarify or adjust his claims. Responding to these actions was crucial. It was a back and forth dance, refining the application to meet the USPTO standards. Through persistence and clarity, Taylor ensured Aerodigi's technology was on its way to being patented. Budgeting was crucial. Taylor had to think about the application fees, possible extra fees for submitting additional claims, and the maintenance fees. Taylor had an advantage though. Because he was a small business, he could get a 60% discount on many of these fees. Taylor also understood how important it was to pay fees on time. If you are late paying the required filing, search, or examination fees, you'll be charged an extra fee. However, because he was a small entity, he not only paid less, he also went through the process with a financial advantage. Finally, Taylor was eager to take advantage of the benefits of electronic filing. He avoided the non-electronic filing fee by choosing this method, which saved him a lot of money. Each dollar he saved was one he could put back into Aerodigi. Taylor's vision for Aerodigi wasn't confined to the US. Having been inspired by his time in Thailand, he envisioned Aerodigi making waves across Southeast Asia and even larger markets like China and India. Given these regions bustling cities and air quality concerns, they were prime markets for his groundbreaking air purifier. To facilitate his international patenting journey, Taylor leaned on the Patent Corporation Treaty or PCT. The PCT is a game changer for innovators like Taylor. Instead of filing individual patent applications in each country, the PCT allows an inventor to file a single international application, providing protection in over 150 countries. But what's the real advantage of the PCT? It buys time. After filing the PCT application, Taylor had up to 30 months to decide on which countries he wanted to seek patent protection. This gave him the flexibility to strategize and prioritize markets based on Aerodigi's growth and demand. So, the PCT process is divided into two main phases. Phase 1, the international phase. It begins with filing the PCT application. Post-filing, an International Search Authority or ISA conducts a search to identify prior art and provides a written opinion on the patent's potential. The second phase is the national phase. After the international phase, which typically is around 30 months from the priority date, Taylor had to individually pursue patent protection in his target countries, adhering to their specific patent regulations. There are several ISAs to choose from, such as the European Patent Office or EPO, the Korean Intellectual Property Office or KAIPO, and the Japan Patent Office or JPO. Taylor, after careful consideration, chose the EPO at his ISA. Their expertise in tech innovation similar to ROTG ensured a comprehensive search and a more informed written opinion. Thailand, where ROTG's spark was ignited, was central to Taylor's strategy, but he also had his sights set on Indonesia, Singapore, China, and India. Each of these countries offered vast market potential, but they also presented unique patent landscapes. The PCT laid the groundwork, but local patent attorneys in each country were invaluable, refining applications to ensure ROTG's robust protection. Taylor's method was very careful. He put countries in order based on their market potential, problems with air quality, and ease of doing business. China's huge market and India's growing tech scene were too important to ignore outside of ASEAN. Every step from learning about the local patent laws to working with local experts was meant to bring ROTG's new ideas to these important markets. Taylor was putting Aerodigi on the map of the world with a clear international patent strategy. From the busy streets of Bangkok to the tech hubs of Bangalore, his whole trip was about protecting and recognizing Aerodigi's innovation. Obtaining a patent is a significant achievement, but the journey doesn't end there. To keep his patent alive, Taylor had to pay maintenance fees at the regular intervals. In the US, typically due at 3.5, 7.5, and 11.5 years after the patent is granted, these fees ensure that the patent remains in force and offers protection against potential infringers. Patents are powerful, but they're not self-enforcing. 
Taylor knew he had to be vigilant. He regularly monitored the market, keeping an eye out for products that might be copying Aerodigi's technology. It's essential for patent holders to be proactive, as catching the infringers early can save time, money, and potential market share. When Taylor identified potential infringements, he didn't hesitate. With the help of his legal team, he approached the alleged infringers. The first step was often negotiation, aiming for a peaceful resolution. If that didn't work, he considered the services of the WIPO Arbitration and Mediation Center. Based in Geneva and Singapore, this center offers alternative dispute resolution methods or ADR, such as mediation and arbitration, specifically tailored for intellectual property disputes. These methods are less confrontational and can be quicker than litigation. Taylor's proactive approach wasn't just about defense. He also explored licensing opportunities, allowing all the companies to use AeroDG's technology under specific terms. This not only generated additional revenue, but also expanded AeroDG's reach in markets Taylor hasn't initially considered. Patent maintenance and enforcement is a continuous journey. It requires an attention, resources, and commitment to protecting one's innovation. For Taylor, every effort was worth it, ensuring that AeroDG's groundbreaking technology remained shielded from copycats. He also leveraged tools like WIPO EDR for efficient case administration, ensuring streamlined and secure management of any disputes. As we've seen with Taylor's journey, patents are more than just legal documents. They are a testament to innovation, hard work, and the drive to bring unique products to the world. With the support of institutions like WIPO and its special services, innovators can navigate the complex world of patent protection more effectively. Taylor knew he couldn't navigate the patent world alone, so he sought a guidance from a seasoned patent attorney. This expert not only helped him with the legal maze, but also gave him insights into the industry's best practices. As Aerodigis grew, he kept innovating, refining, and updating his patents. This ensured that Aerodigis stayed ahead of the curve, always protected and always relevant. And beyond legal counsel, Taylor tapped into a wealth of networking sources. He joined the United Inventors Association, attended major trade shows like CES, and participated in IP conferences organized by WIPO. Online, he engaged with his peers on Inventors Forum and relevant LinkedIn groups. Locally, he frequented Makerspace and university innovation hubs. These platforms weren't just about learning, they were about building a community. A community that understood the highs and lows of bringing innovation into the market and the intricacies of protecting it. Curious how patents can reveal a company's future moves? I've been diving into an iconic company's patent portfolios to predict their next strategic steps in our patent playbook series. We have already explored Pokemon's company's patent strategy, link in the description below. Next week, we turn our spotlight to IBM. Ever wonder why they've been in the top patent filer for over two decades? What might IBM's next move be in the tech world? Join us as we decode the secrets behind the patent playbook. Subscribe now so you don't miss out these revealing insights.